Hey, whether you're just getting into quilting or you've been doing it for a long time, I've got a super fun and easy project today to help you show your support for all of those who are taking care of us out there while we're home staying safe. Let's get started. That is right, but I can't take credit for all of this myself. As a matter of fact, I can't take credit for any of this at all myself. This comes from Karen. You know Karen over at Sew and Save in Racine, Wisconsin. She asked me if I could help get this movement started. Let's go ahead and put it on the wall while we're telling you what's going on here. Now these awesome window heart quilts is part of something you can do to just show your support and spread the love across your community right now while we are all staying safe at home, doing all kinds of wonderful quilting and sewing projects and preventing the spread of the coronavirus, of course. So this is a really super simple project. Now Karen has made quilt kits using the awesome Michael Miller fabric. So she's got some of the fairy frost, the cotton couture, the marble and the hash dot for all of you. So the project we're doing today here on my set is going to be all but exactly what's in the kits. I might have some of the fabrics out of order because I'm doing them before she gets her fabrics. And anyways, we are having fun and that's exactly what we do right here at Making It Fun. Quick thing I'll also point out over on the Michael Miller website, michaelmiller.com, we have an inspiration page page with free downloads over there. Now, Wendy Shepard also has a really cool um, flag heart quilt uh, project, which is another awesome thing you can do to follow along with these same, support the military, support the emergency medical services, support your local community idea. So this is another free pattern and the construction is very, very similar to what I'm gonna walk you through today in Karen's pattern. Now I'm gonna have the link here for this information as well as how to get the kits for you. So we're gonna dive right into this. Let me go ahead and show you the steps as we're going to do. Now, we're, first thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need the to make our half square triangles using our blue and white fabric. And these are gonna form the outer border pieces over there, but this is the first step in the instruction. So it does start with four each of the white and the blue. Now what I want you to do is I want you to take your lighter of the two fabrics and just draw a line diagonally. And I like to use a very fine Sharpie marker. This is gonna be a cut line, so it's not gonna transfer. Uh, but that Sharpie marker there is a real easy to um, stitch on and it's not too wide. And so with this, I'm gonna lay this on top of the right sides here. So now as I come on over to the machine, I'm just gonna use that actual line on the edge of my foot. So as I lower my presser foot, I'm just gonna sew, looking at that line here, I'm gonna go all the way down one side and you can either chain piece these or you can stop, lift your presser foot, even leaving your needle down and coming to the other side here. Make sure it picks up nicely as you start. And we're gonna sew through this side also. So what we've effectively done is we've made two of the half square triangles now. And with that, the next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim them. You should use your ruler to keep your hands safe, but if you take your time, you can just trim through them like this. And then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna press these to the dark side. And that is done just by holding the dark fabric up in the air as the iron goes through there. That's gonna form that outer border as we get there. We're diving into the, the heart self, uh, the center of the heart. That's gonna be super fun. And I'm gonna use this red fairy frost with threads all over it, I guess. So I'm gonna have two of these rectangles and then I'm gonna also need four of these little white squares and you can see they both have their diagonal lines drawn across them. We're gonna do what's called snowballing. Now, if you haven't seen that term, what we're gonna really do is we're gonna take this fabric, let's start with a big one so it's easy to see. And this is gonna form the lower edge of the heart. And so I'm gonna lay this on here, right sides together, just like this. And now we're gonna come on and we're gonna actually sew right on that line versus using that as an edge line. So now as I slide this under here, even though I have the edge guide on my foot, I can just kind of lift that up and now I'm looking at the line right in the center of the foot. I'm gonna sew right through there. All the way off the end. And this pattern's so simple that before I do any other steps, I'm gonna actually go ahead and lay one more unit on the corner. And just to point it out there, you can see the lines are running in opposite directions that way. So let's go ahead and get one of these small blocks on here. Same exact method, we're gonna sew through the drawn line. And 
And now that I have a bottom edge and one of the top edges on, watch what we're gonna do now. Now let's use our ruler to really protect our hands, create a quarter inch seam allowance, and we're gonna trim the bottom portion of this off. If you're not sure, take a second to double check what you're doing. You don't wanna have to do this again. And for the top corner, I'm gonna do the same, but I'm gonna trim the top corner off. And now as we press these over, you can already start to see the heart starting to form. We need to put one more snowball across this corner. So I needed to press over the first piece before I can lay the second piece on. And this is the part that's gonna really count here. So I wanna make sure that this is gonna now dip in to form the V in the heart at the top. And so this is running in opposite directions or forming a little bit of an arrow there. So again, I'm just gonna line up the outer edges of the red fairy frost to the white fabric. I'm gonna come up here to this nice top corner and stitch it on. Trim it off. Press it over. And you have half of my heart already. Okay, super simple. And we're gonna do the same thing for the other side, but all we really have to make sure now that we've already built one and they are right sides up, these are not solid, so we, we wanna make sure we're doing it right. Now I wanna form the V at the bottom. And so I'm running this line, same V. So I'm gonna sew this one on right now just to make sure I get it correct. And then finish out putting on those other small snowballs for the top. And then once you have that last little top corner piece in, again, press it over. And now we're gonna marry together, join together the two halves of the heart. And we're gonna do that, lining them up, and we're gonna go right down the center seam, right sides together. Take a second and match those points. and the heart is all done, we are going to start building out our star points as we go around. So we have eight of these half square triangles and we're basically gonna go ahead and insert, seems like I'm always putting them in the wrong way first, right? And as you start to build it around, I'll show you the way it's gonna kind of form here. And then we can actually assemble these in a hurry too. Because if you'll notice what's happened, as I place these down, to get this star thing happening, each of the half square triangle sets is gonna just be sewn together with the blue or whatever fabric you've got there forming into another point. So technically I can do that with all four of these pieces very simply before I drop in the corners here on these two long edges. So I'm just gonna flop these over, match up the seam points at the top. And literally just make two pieces that are gonna be the short rectangles and then grab the other ones. And then yes, with your other two sides, basically once you join the center blue triangles, you can just flop them right over and grab two of those blue solid squares. And if the orientation of the print doesn't matter, you can just stitch them on to the outside edges here. Do one. 
then the other before you go on over to the iron just to save a few steps. And as I begin to press these, I'm just gonna press the long strips basically in one direction because it's not gonna truly matter too much for orientation of the blocks. Get them all set over, drop them back onto the project so you know how they go. And now we're gonna go ahead and start by putting on the short edges first. So just lining up the top and the bottom to the heart. Once the short sides are on, take a moment and press those over. And that'll really help because now you have these extra little seam points to line up the seam points from where you put the blocks together on the outside edge. So just line those up and install your outer borders. Oh, it's looking terrific. And I am double checking to make sure I have everything correct. Like I said, we are now gonna put on our outer borders. And our outer borders are made from the hash dot fabric and you're just gonna need two strips that are your width of your goods. And what I do with these, I do it real simply. Of course, you could measure your block and get everything just right. But what I do is I just come down here and I just take the selvages off. So I have a really nice starting edge and then I'm just gonna start on one edge of the project and I'm gonna line it up. Now, you'll notice I've got a nice sewing machine. I'm not pulling, I'm not pulling or tugging or pushing or anything, but I'm just gonna sew this on real nice and gentle, letting the machine do all the work. It's feeding through ever so nicely. And then once I've stitched past the corner, I'm gonna cut my threads. And now this is what I think is the important trick here. Before I open this up or iron or do anything that could possibly distort it, I make sure that the extra thread tail is out of the way safely so I don't cut into it. And then I use a long ruler and I'm actually gonna look at my threads here and the edge of this to make sure that when I trim, I get a nice, edge there and that way as I get ready to press it over and I'm going to press into the border at this point I get a really nice edge and I also had a very nice cut from where I just left off so as I rotate that to put on the short side on the opposite edge from where we were working I can just drop this down here again and be ready to go so just like with the inner borders, the patchwork borders, once you have the two short sides on, you can do the same for the long side, and that's where that other, other strips are gonna come in handy. So you're gonna need both. Awesome, so while I put on my long borders, why don't you get yourself started, and I'll see you back here in just a few moments, and we'll get the quilting process all put together as well. And once you have the borders around your cute little heart star for your window, we're gonna go ahead and do some free motion machine quilting or you could do stitch in the ditch. Now, either way, the point I wanna make is you don't need much more than about an 18 to 20 inch square, but even though it's a small piece, and yes, you're seeing the red fairy frost here, right? But this is just cause it's what I had. I was helping Karen get all the kits together and I'm almost positive you have the awesome navy hash dot in your kits there if you're following along with the kits from Karen's shop. Either way, you need about an 18 to 20 20 inch square here, but even though it's small, what I want to point out is we're going to take the time 
to use some of our wonderful blue tape. It's even too small to clamp here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just secure a corner if I can, and another corner here. I'm just gonna pull it taut because I wanna always practice good quilting habits. Do the other sides as well. You can hopefully see this wrinkle will pull out there. So that's just secured it on top of my cutting and or pinning mat. And now I'm gonna take a chunk of batting, larger than the quilt top itself, float it down there, and then I'm just gonna take my wonderful little window heart quilt and make sure it's centered within that backing. And we don't need many, but I'm still gonna use just a few of my curved safety pins. Always all stuck together, of course. Okay, and I'm gonna put one right in the center of the project. And then I'm just gonna kinda of pet, pet, pet out to about the middle of each one of these blue squares we dropped in there earlier. And that should just keep everything nice and secure, the backing, the batting, and of course our quilt top all working together in unison as we get ready to roll over here now, I've already replaced the foot on my machine with my free motion foot, and as I come in here, I really want the red heart to loft out of the quilt, into the window, into the audience, and so I'm basically just gonna quilt in the white spaces. So I've got white thread and everything. Let me just see, I'm gonna come down here to a great starting spot. So I'm gonna lower my presser foot so that there's tension on my thread. I'm gonna drop the needle a single time and back up so I can just pull it over to the side, yank up on it here a little bit, and now I've got my bobbin thread coming up. I'm gonna come over real close because I accidentally pulled it up through the red fabric, and now I'm just gonna make some stitches, stitches in place. And now I'm just gonna kind of begin stitching first by kind of echoing around the quilt. And even though I have my free motion foot on, I can do basically what is straight sewing. And that is gonna head and secured here. And now I'm just gonna play in this area with some easy, fun, basic machine quilting stitches to just hold that white fabric down even more, causing the fun red heart to pop up more. So you could do hearts, you could do swirls. I'm doing swirls because it's what I'm used to, and also the blue fabric, the marble by Michael Miller, is a swirl looking fabric. And so this will make sense. I'm actually gonna diamond, I think, the blue fabric. I love to do swirling motions in straight or open areas. And then if I've got curved areas, I like to do straight lines in it. So juxtaposition of our quilting in and amongst our fabric motif. being cautious not to work too far away from the areas I've already stitched in around the heart. If you work too far away and then come back, you are likely to create a pucker. And we wouldn't want that. Now in this instance, I've worked my way all the way into a corner away from where I started. So let me show you this trick on a way to stop your free motion machine quilting as well. So I'm just gonna take a few more stitches right in place here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and lift my presser foot up. Oop. I'm gonna lift my needle up first, then lift my presser foot up. And then as I pull this away, I should be able to come in here and pull up on this thread, cut it with my scissor. And if I cut it really close, a lot of times I've actually cut the bobbin thread as well and I'm secured and I'm ready to move on to the next step. Now, as I'm doing the blue stitching, I'm just doing some straight line stitching and I started by using the edge of the star and the edge of the foot as my guide. And then as I come down in here to the perpendicular lines, and this is kind of fun because it's a patriotic feeling. So this is just stripes to go in with my heart. And I'm just using the edge of that foot and you're just gonna work each section kind of individually. Again, coming into a good stopping point, bringing your needle up, bringing your foot up, sliding over to the side, pulling that thread up, and moving on to a new place. As I get into that new orientation, what I wanna do 
So I'm going to remove my pin. And I'm just kind of keeping this line right here on the project straight. The edge of the foot, drop a stitch. Restart that bobbin thread back up on the top. Now I can just begin sewing. Now I'm going to use this once that foot looks like it's clear. And I like to free motion my straight stitches like this because it makes it feel more organic. And you can see how that other one lined up fairly nicely. And this just keeps the rhythm now going. And a corner is a great place to stop, of course. So once I get all that done, I'm gonna go and do some straight line sewing perimeter all the way around the borders, put the binding on, and check this out. And like I said, it couldn't be any easier than that. There it is, all finished up. My very own window heart quilt with the awesome Michael Miller Basics fabric. That's right, we've got the Fairy Frost, the Cotton Couture, the Marble, the Hash Dot. Oh my gosh, it doesn't get much better than that. Well, that's not true. It absolutely does. Karen, you're better than that. Thank you very, very much for including me in this awesome opportunity to spread some love during our coronavirus staying safe at home period. Uh, this is a great project. I'm so glad. I got to get it, uh, involved in a little bit of the fun. Thank you everybody for watching today's tutorial. Please make sure you support Sew and Save and the gang over in Racine, Wisconsin. Grab a kit and we'll see you real soon with another awesome tutorial. Thanks again. I'm glad to see you're still there. Hey, if you insist on spending all day on YouTube, great with me. Please check out a few of my other videos. I think they're fantastic. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified. We'll see you next time for another helping of fun.